What's going on, provoked people? Uh, that would be us, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, there's the provoked <laughs> listeners. Yeah. <laughs> there, you, there you go. <laughs> hey, uh, good to see all you guys. And um, even though I can't see you, you can only see me. But it's good to have you on our show. If this is your first time tuning into Apologia Studios and Provoked, so happy that you're here. And um, yeah, I'm Zach. And this is my sister, Des. I'm Desi Mays, wife of Don Mays. This is Jake the Bull. Nice. Bull. <laughs> yes, my my last name is literally Bull, <laughs> like the animal. Yeah. We had to come yeah. up with the side with a, uh, some name for you. Yeah. I was going to say sidekick. <laughs> we don't, we don't <laughs> like, Jeff is the ninja, Joy's the girl, Luke's the bear. We don't have names like that, so maybe we should come up with that. Yeah, yeah. it's dorky. That's why we're not... <laughs> <laughs> And then, no, we got to come up with names. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Just feel like the people like didn't get picked on the kickball team. Like, yeah, you know, it's just stupid anyway. I don't want it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. <laughs> anyway, so, hey, we're going to jump into the show. But what you can do before you we, we do that is go to ApologiaStudios.com. Please click on Becoming an All Access member. You hear me say that all the time because that's the way that you can give back to the ministry and really help and support us as we just strive to do what God has called us to do with vigor and with longevity and with increasing influence and all of that expansion type of kingdom work that we all want to do. So if you could do that, we would appreciate that very much. So what we're going to do today is kind of continue on in our segment of exposing false teachers like we had talked about in the last episode with Michael Todd. Um, not not the funnest thing to do, you know, but the necessary right. thing to do because uh, confrontation is necessary. And it's a loving thing to do for those who are uh, false teachers to confront you and say, hey, you're... <laughs> you're false. You're, you're not teaching what the word, word, word of God says. You're not qualified so they can step, <laughs> excuse me, so they can step away from that. And it's the most loving thing to do to those who are being influenced by them. Yeah. That's the reason why we do what we do. But wait, it's not nice. What do you say to that, Jake? <laughs> After I get done laughing at your voice, you're doing, um, it's not nice. We're not called to be nice. Yeah. Um, we're called to speak the truth in yeah. love. Um, and the way we love people is by telling them the truth with a concern for their soul. And that's what we're doing here. Yeah. We're called, called to mark them out. Yep. Right. Wait, but wait, there's aren't more. You, aren't you supposed to go to them personally? Why are you doing this so publicly? <laughs> Jake the uh, bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Titus one nine, hold firm. This is specifically for elders, but hold firm to the trustworthy word is taught. So that you may be able to give instruction and sound doctrine and and rebuke those who contradict it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's being given to a pastor for the flock. Uh, Romans, the passage you uh, quoted to mark and avoid. This is something that's done not for just the benefit of the person. This is done for everyone who's going to be influenced and hears it. Mm-hmm. So we talk about these people who have very, very large platforms, right. um, you know, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people, Mike Todd at this point, millions of people, um, this is for their sake too. You know, it's not just the individual, it's yeah. for the people who are being influenced by this too. We love them and we want them to be warned. Yeah. And we have, a, they, like you said, they have a very public ministry and so they need to be publicly marked and avoided. Right. 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 Yeah. And yeah, that's the answer is why aren't you just going to him and knocking on his door? Well, a lot of these guys are um, typically inaccessible. We'd love mm-hmm. to talk with them. Yeah, yeah, they got layers of security and stuff like we, we, we would love them. And, but, but they're putting their teaching out in the open for everybody to see. So um, yep. it's kind of open game as far as being able to confront that, which we should because we're pointing out wolves. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be able to to do that in a way to where the sheep can can hear you. Right. Say, hey, don't go over there. Don't do not have anything to do with this guy. He's just yeah. going to devour you. That's that's why we do it, because we love the sheep. And uh, this next guy has done a lot of damage to yeah, uh, man. to a lot of people. So Todd Bentley is who we're going to talk about. Other people have talked about him. Actually, not too many. You know, I've looked on YouTube. Maybe I'm not seeing all of the, the videos relevant to kind of confronting Todd or exposing Todd. But he's not a good guy. You know, he's he's created in the image of God. He has dignity, value, and worth. And I think this is a demonstration of love towards you, Mr. Bentley. If you if you hear us, but you are on the wrong path. And yeah. uh, you're headed to a literal judgment. Um, 
and it's going to be pretty strict for you according to what you've done. So who is Todd? A lot of people may know who he is. I think he's probably um, more well known than Michael Todd at this moment. Maybe not. I mean, I know yeah. he had his heyday 20 years ago or so. Right. And I think there's probably, there's kind of, we talked about this last episode, but like this kind of passing of the torch almost like right. Mike Todd's kind of this newer wave of teachers and Todd's Bentley is a little bit more in the past, but still, still well known. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Todd Bentley was like a key figure in the Lakeland revival. Uh, what yep. was that? 10 years ago. Yeah. About 15 years ago, 15 years yeah. ago. And now he kind of resurfaced again in Asbury. Although a lot of people were like, Eesh, he's there. Even yeah. people that were like on the fence about it were like, oh no, he, yeah. if he's saying it's good, then it's probably not. Yeah. Good. So if you're walking right. in, you're like, hey, what's this? And you say, oh, there's Todd Bentley. You should just walk right out. Yeah. <laughs> just like 100%. Turkey, you turn right yeah. out yeah. that door. Yeah. 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 Unless but, he's like publicly reprinting, yeah, you should just like dive off the building. <laughs> no, bounce. don't do yeah, that. Yeah. Because we'll see. I'm going to show a clip of yeah. what was going on at the, the Lakeland Revival. But he's a 47 year old Christian. Canadian evangelist with quotes, mm -hmm. um, yes, quotes. You know, and like you said, gained a whole lot of prominence through the Lakeland Revival. Mm -hmm. uh, millions of people were watching that via live stream, but also hundreds of thousands were attending it. It's insane. Um, so he's a self-proclaimed faith healer. And uh, even though there hasn't been one single healing that's had documentable evidence to validate an actual healing has occurred. So um, everything kind of stopped, and I'm, I'll get into it a little bit more, when ABC did their Nightline investigation of it. Um, and so they said that not a single quote, not a single claim of Bentley's healing powers could be independently verified, close quote. And so when they came on the scene, it kind of shut everything down. So Todd was closely connected to the New Apostolic Reformation. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, guys like Rick Joyner, Bill Johnson. And I think what you can know from, from the beginning is that those men lack complete discernment if they put um, Todd Bentley in any position of spiritual authority. Right. Mm -hmm. Giving him a mic, putting him up on a stage, putting a camera in front of him, it goes to show you how completely devoid of any type of discernment Rick Joyner and Bill Johnson have because of the fruits that have been produced, the bad fruit that's been produced um, by Todd Bentley. Um, and it, the funny thing is their whole, and I should be careful, but they said they have a connect, you know, they're connected to God in a very special way the new apostolic NAR, NAR, new apostolic reformation, they hear from God. Um, but if they did, they truly did, they would never put him on the platform. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It goes to show you that their discernment is, is lacking or is absolutely nothing. So <clears throat> he, he, uh, and we'll get into it a little bit more, but he kind of dropped out of the scene in, in, uh, late 2008, but he's still doing his stuff. Um, he's in charge of Revival Harvest Ministries, and um, he's going to go on a healing and kingdom tour in Oklahoma City, and yeah, that's happening June the 2nd through the 5th. So he's still doing his stuff. Yeah. Right. So that's a question I thought people might have is, hey, this is kind of an old uh, false prophet or yep. false teacher. Why are you bringing him up? Well, he's still doing his stuff. Yep. Yeah. He's still victimizing people. He's still devouring people. Um, and he's horribly destructive. <laughs> For more ways than one. He's yeah. a horribly destructive individual who has hurt a lot of people. And, and I think it's based upon the fact, and you guys can jump in whatever you want, mm -hmm. that the, his entire healing ministry, and this is typical with faith healers when it comes to Benny Hinn or whoever else, it's built on the notion that your faith is what heals you. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 You have to have enough faith and God is up there and he's saying, okay, you just, you get to level whatever level of faith that I think is good enough. And then I'm going to heal you, heal you of whatever you're, yep. you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So go ahead. It's, well, it's a, it's also just a note on that too, is you, you kind of get down deep into what's going on with stuff like that, with the faith healing. We talked about this a little bit when we talked about Kenneth Copeland, people view faith as this like tangible force mm -hmm. that you can then manipulate to mm -hmm. get what you want. Right. And then if you do that, then it puts God, and then this kind of dovetails in with the prosperity gospel too. I mean, there's nothing new under the sun. And a lot of these false teachings, when you really dig down into them, they're really not that creative. Right. It's really right. just um, God's off the throne, man is on the throne, mm -hmm. and uh, we can get what we want. And we just slap God's name on it is really the thing. So yeah. if, if we want to uh, utilize 
faith and h- harness our faith and, 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 and drum up enough faith and we get enough people around and there's someone on stage and there's a woman shaking and I'm putting my hand on her leg or whatever. And uh, then God is now obligated to do what I want because of the environment I've created, because of the amount of faith I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God is now in my debt. Right. You know, and, and where does that even begin to resemble Christianity? You know, nowhere. But nowhere. Because it draws a crowd. Because, again, uh, as we'll see, like Todd Bentley, engaging speaker. When he talks, people are like turning their heads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and they people hear that and they think, well, uh, he must have some level of authority then because of how he's talking and what he's doing. Yeah. And he exactly. Doesn't. Yeah. It's and what's a- crazy about it is, I mean, you look at him, you look at what he does. And it's the antithesis or the exact polar opposite of what a man should God, what a man of God should be saying and doing. It's like these people who go and are really enraptured by a charismatic personality. And I've been victim to that too. You know, like just, wow, this guy is so confident Mm -hmm. and exuding with charisma and believability. And then you just kind of get sucked into Mm -hmm. that. Um, But it goes to show you that the people that, support him and sit under them their biblical understanding is nothing yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i don't want to be cruel in saying that but again the discernment levels are absolutely nil if you know your scriptures you know if you're being led by a good faithful pastor you're going to look at that and want to vomit like i look at i can't listen to what he says for more than a minute i mean it's just like somebody jamming acid balls in my eyes it's repulsive yeah Yeah, it's absolutely repulsive but what's so damaging is the fact that you've got people coming in at the Lakeland Revival, there was people in wheelchairs, mm-hmm. right? There was people bringing their moms and dads for four stage cancer, all sorts of, you know, people with cerebral palsy. And so they come and they're not healed and uh, it's because they lack faith. So they're suffering horribly. They're thinking, Hey, healings are happening constantly Mm -hmm. because people are going up on the stage saying, I've been healed with my shoulder and look at, I don't have any acne on my face and or whatever. Um, I felt the power of God rush through me and they're saying, Oh, they're, they're being healed. Yeah. Then they wheel them up and nothing happens. And so they not only suffering based upon their physical condition, but now spiritual depression. Mm -hmm. Now it's, I don't have faith. God is judging me. He's penalizing me because I don't have the faith that it takes to be healed. Yep. How yep. horrible is that? Yeah. How wicked is that? How wrong is that? And manipulative. And <clears throat> um, these people are likely being asked to or will at some point give money. You know, so you think about this. Man, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's kind of disgusting. To yeah. Think about. These are the most vulnerable people, I was just say that. sick. Yeah. Some of them got terminal illnesses. Yeah. And you're telling them, something that's completely untrue you don't have enough faith that's why you're not better it's yeah. so predatory that's yeah, what it makes that's it word, so yeah. repulsive is because you're literally preying on super vulnerable people who are just desperate for healing they're they're suffering like you said and you're preying on them to what have some big show to fill your banks right. like it's gross well it's, it's infuriating it's yeah, yeah it's, it's demonic it's infuriating yeah you you think you care about people yeah when you do stuff like that you got a guy coming in with four stage cancer he's thinking about i'm about to tell the people that i love goodbye Mm -hmm. i'm never going to see my kids again these guys are worried who's going to take care of my kids who's going to marry my daughter Mm -hmm. that i'm not going to see you know i mean just fear i mean you know know, a lot of these people are trusting in the sovereignty of god i believe that Mm -hmm. you know but a lot of angst and stress and fear and then you go to a place like this, you don't get healed, and it's, oh, uh, God's punishing me. I don't have enough faith. And a lot of these people doubt their salvation. So right. it gets into assurance issues. Yeah. Right. Maybe I'm not a true Christian because God is treating me this way or he's withholding his hand of healing. It's absolutely predatory. And that's yeah. why these men are wolves. Right. Because they prey on this stuff for their own gain. Yeah, of course. It's for the money because these people are paying gobbles of money. Yeah. I mean, the Lakeland Revival brought in millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, It's all for the manipulation and really just uh, fleecing the flock. It's, it's sick. Yeah. So not only does he do that on a spiritual level, but this guy physically assaults people on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So... He's done, and I'll show a clip here in a second, body slamming people, mm-hmm. full mount 
got full mount on a guy and started strangling him. These are people who are weak and physically suffering. You yeah. Know what I mean? If I saw that happening there, I mean, I would. Right. I don't know what I'd do. I'd go pull him off. <laughs> yeah. And chuck him off the stage. Right. I yeah. mean, you're it's just completely. Can you imagine somebody with stomach cancer? This guy has, sorry, he had colon cancer. This guy's suffering and he goes and kicks him in the stomach. Yeah. And then these people, I mean, who in the world wouldn't run out of there? Yeah. Can you imagine me and you go into something like that and we know that this guy's got cancer, they announce it, and he kicks him in the stomach? I would immediately bum rush the stage yeah. and tear that guy off the yeah. stage. I don't even care if I went to jail. It's unacceptable. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. This is and how in the world are people just like, oh, that's okay. Well, I we'll think, get into that a little right. bit more. Yeah, but, I know. I was just we can go in deeper, but I think it there becomes almost like this like stars in your eyes type of thing because there's so much despair there and so much building up to this event and like they probably save money to go and to travel out there and there's just this hope you know you're gonna save my loved one you're gonna heal me you're gonna heal my loved one that they're just like is this right maybe they're new to the the faith and they're just sometimes things like that can happen i think like and you're just stunned you're like shocked and you're like did that really happen other people aren't doing anything and it becomes like a crowd uh like a peer thing where it's like well everybody else is okay with it yep. so maybe i'm crazy you know but oh sure yeah. yeah and i totally and i think that's a really balanced way to look kind at of it. like a group think yeah. tank you know because we are in the word we've been you know in the faith for a time yeah so we can have those discerning powers built upon yeah uh you know the residual word of god that we have in our hearts right. informing us this is wrong yeah but it just seems to me like a dude punches a guy with cancer kicks a guy with cancer but what does he say what does todd bentley say all throughout his ministry god told me audibly yeah. god told me audibly right. and like uh yeah what jake and i were saying that's the ultimate trump card right if god told you and i actually believe that god is speaking to you with the audibly it doesn't matter what i say yeah because god told you to do it therefore it must be okay for you to do that yeah and right. if you're doubting then you just don't have faith like if you think this is weird it's just because you're just not there spiritually yet you know you're just not mature enough in the faith to see this type of thing and so then you start doubting Oh, maybe I am mature, immature in the faith. Yeah. Maybe I, I am doubting. Am I doubting that God could heal somebody? It, God can do whatever he wants. Right. You know, you just start believing the madness. Right. Yeah. So. And, and this is why, this is why we will die on the hill of Sola Scriptura. Yeah. Because uh, a, a lot of people don't take it this far, but people like Todd Bentley demonstrate that you can take it that far when you uh, purport to have a word from God and there's no reference point, there's no way to verify that. There's no way to test it. Uh, you have people who say really manipulative and abusive things, and that's viewed then as acceptable in those circles when it's not. Uh, but that's why we need to have a standard outside of ourselves to compare what's being said Amen. to. And if you don't Amen. have that, this is the result. You're in like, trouble. Look, yeah, this is this is what happens when you follow mm -hmm. no uh, Bible is the word of God, no mm -hmm. God's ultimate authority to its to its end. You yeah, know, you see this level of, of depravity. Yeah, totally. you do, and it all has to do with order. You know, the order of worship, the order of God's assembly of yep. people, the order of church government, the people that should be teaching, the people that shouldn't. So when you pull it out of God's order, everything breaks down from there it's like a house of cards yes. i was just counseling somebody and i said you know the big issue is um you know the lack of order within the home and because there's no order there it's not designed and it's not operating the way that god would have it well we're suffering the consequences from right. it you know it's right. just the family unit or the the church but let's listen to this yeah. guy for a few minutes <laughs> the Lord told me, um, and remember, I didn't know he had a broken sternum or broken yeah. ribs. The Lord said, I want you to punch him in the sternum as hard as you can. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you know, restoration, Rick's here, my first service. Uh, you know, God, you want me to punch this guy? And I, it just didn't make sense to me. And I thought, Lord, he's dying. You know, he, he yeah. lost over 40 pounds. So anyways, I punched him in that broken sternum, and he ended up on the ground and just vibrating under the power of God, he gets up and immediately you could see a change in his face, in his yeah. countenance. And uh, long story short, he was totally healed of cancer. The broken sternum was healed. The ribs were healed. Instantly. Instantly. With the punch. With he the got punch. healed. It didn't hurt him. I said, God, I've prayed for like a hundred crippled people. Not one 
He said, that's because I want you to grab that lady's crippled legs and bang them up and down on the platform like a baseball bat. I walked up and I grabbed her legs and I started going, Be healed! Be healed! I started banging them up and down on the platform. She got healed. And I'm thinking, God, why is not the power of God moving? He said, because you haven't kicked that woman in the face. And there's this older lady worshipping right in front of the platform. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face. With your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. BAM! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. Just like... You just really don't have a ton of words. No. After you see something like that, I mean, other wow. than demon, like yeah. that yeah. just seems like demonic. Yeah, the hard thing is the laughing and the yeah, 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 the sycophantic approval mm -hmm. right, right. of of this guy, and it it's just it just goes to show you, like, um, I, you know, and I I think I've said this before. John MacArthur, what's the biggest issue with the church? A lack of discernment, you know, yeah. where the word of God is not, I mean, come on, you're, you're sitting under that. The word of God is not going in and through you. Yeah. And, and I like how you balance that out with Des, with a lot of these people could be new to the faith. This is all that they know, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. or somebody told them like, Hey, I know you're dying of stage four cancer, but you know, there's this guy over here that's claiming to heal people might be worth a try. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. And then he starts kicking people in the face. Yeah. So this is my opinion. Um, but I think he's a sick, demented, snake oil salesman, con man, huckster, mm -hmm. who gets off on physically hurting people. Yeah. I mean, this is all coming from him. And I think that's coming from the pit of hell. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like Satan's just laughing, you know, yeah. just, yeah. he's totally in control of this individual who is kicking God's people in the face, punching them in the face kicking them in the stomach and they're just allowing that to happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's found an outlet to fulfill his desire to hurt people physically. Yeah. And this is, so he's loving it and he's getting paid to do it too. Yeah. yeah he's know? getting paid. There's, and there could be maybe some assumptions of, Oh, you know, like pe people who listen, like, Oh, they may know what camp we land in. Like, we don't believe there's actually a voice speaking to Todd Bentley. Like we're scripture alone. We just, yeah. but I'm, I will say this. There may there there may very well be a spirit speaking those things to Todd Bentley. Mm -hmm. Oh sure, uh, but it's not the Lord. Yeah, you know, like yeah. he may very well be hearing stuff, uh, and and that may be prompting him to do things. Like I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities. Right. Oh, and, absolutely. And in twenty twenty five, well known prominent leaders within his camp, within the charismatic movement, including Dr. Michael Brown, publicly stated that he was unfit for ministry because of not only this madness and craziness and wickedness but also because of his sexual immoral uh past and i i don't know where he is now with that but he's demonstrated that he's an immoral man he uh cheated on his wife while they were separated ended up marrying the woman who he was having an affair with he's just demonstrated over the years over and over that he is bearing bad fruit yeah. Very, very rank fruit. Yeah. 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 So um, you're exactly right. Well, we have an older sister named Jamie, and I talked to her about this. She said it was okay. So Jamie actually married a man named Boyan Jancic. He's a pastor in New York City, still um, pastors a church called City Light. Mm -hmm. And um, they were a part of the Lakeland Revival. So when that kicked off in April of 2008, I remember when it did. And I remember the things that I was seeing from it and talking to Jamie and saying, hey, you know, these are some big red flags, um, even back then. But she kind of got a behind the scenes look at it, you know, because Boyan actually preached. Now, Todd was the big figure. And it's like kind of crazy that God only heals based upon these charismatic, charismatic communicators. <laughs> right. Like, like he, yeah. yeah. You know, without that guy, God's not going to really heal anybody. It's only based upon this guy, which I think is just a tell that this is right. just a, this is something that this guy is doing based upon his own capabilities, yeah. you know, deceptive yep. capabilities. So 
Anyway, Boyan was preaching there. I know he preached during the daytime and stuff, but Jamie actually got to go behind the scenes and see in the green rooms and just, um, you know, what she had said on the phone to me a couple of days ago was she thinks a lot of these people were loving, well-meaning, like really, really wanting to see healing, really needing that, going there, expecting um, good things, like not people who, uh, how can I put it, were wanted she believes that the most people were really seeking god in it mm -hmm. seeking that you know maybe this is a revival like we've seen in the past because yeah. we know there's been legitimate revivals the great awakening mm -hmm. yada 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 god has moved upon certain people in certain times in powerful ways and so they're saying maybe this is it yeah but you i know, mean there there had to be it had to be a, a lot of that because like you said if there wasn't people that were truly just hoping and desperate for that they would have ran out Right. You know what I mean? Sure. Like they if there wasn't that hope and just like I hope this is real, you know? Yeah, they would have ran out. Mm -hmm. The problem is they don't run out. Number one is because I hear from God, but number two, men like Bill Johnson and Rick Joyner and some others, I can't remember their name, they are validating this man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're culpable for all of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because they say, Okay, not only is he speaking for God and God speaking for speaking to him, but look at these men I respect who are saying, Listen to Todd Bentley. Right they're guilty for a lot yes. of this harm and yes. a lot of this damage that's gone on. So Jame is at the revival. I can't remember how long they stayed for quite a bit. I think mm -hmm. like a month or so, mm. but she got to see behind the scenes <clears throat> and she said, it was just a lot of theater. You know, it's just a lot of actors. Mm -hmm. like yeah. The men that you see on stage are not the men that you see behind closed doors, behind closed doors. It was a lot of flesh, a lot of flexing, you know, like yep. my church has this much, I have this much money and a lot of, um, dis disillusioned, disenchanted people because of what happened. So like you had said, he, uh, Dateline comes in in October of 2008, does a, a reveal expose, he, expose or and he yeah. bails mm -hmm. he just yep. says i'm done with it and then he ends up getting a divorce with his wife and i think it was either his nanny or somebody on staff mm. that he got into a uh, relationship with and uh you know left his wife so that, that's the fruits yeah right mm -hmm. that those are the true fruits that you have to look at because those speak to the character of a man um and your your mention there of uh the you know divorce and relation relational issues at home and whatever it is um we've begun to talk about this a lot and it's one of the points of passion for me is the the men who are in the pulpit the men who are speaking uh and teaching god's word to congregations to people who go to conferences whatever it is um, it is so critical for them to be qualified according to scripture and if they're not you start to get into all these issues because people are really good i mean narcissistic people especially are really good at putting on a mask and a mm -hmm. facade to where when they get on the stage they seem really genuine mm -hmm. they seem really caring about people and um and and then that can mislead but that's why it's so important to look at who the person is when they're not on the stage yeah like i heard a quote a while back i thought it was good of who you are at home is who you are, you know? Right. And, and if you look at some of those things behind closed doors, again, marital issues, uh, stuff like that, where he's just like hopping from thing to thing. It's like, okay, these are huge alarm bells going off. Mm -hmm. But when he's on stage, he seems really like a, probably a good guy. And he seems like he's telling the truth. Oh, yeah. when, it's like, when you no, watch him, you know? yeah. When you, sorry to cut you off. No, no. I didn't mean that. Uh, when you listen to like, his candor and the way he talks he sounds really oh yeah and then i just yeah, like harmless yeah, yeah i just a nice canadian guy and you know what i just kicked this lady right in the face and yeah. you know <laughs> this is the way he says it though yeah. you're like whoa that's just crazy and then another one he's like um i went he just tells this whole story and i'll i know we got to wrap up here mm -hmm. um He's just like, oh, yeah, I, uh, I I just went and I had this encounter with God. I saw him. I was in the presence of the Lord, he says. And he looked me in the eyes and his eyes were dripping with love. And you're like, wait a minute. You were in the presence of the Lord and you weren't incinerated? Vaporized, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, that's one of his false teachings. Yeah. So he's got a lot. I mean, you know, the problem with this is that uh you know a lot of people are brothers and sisters in the charismatic movement believe prophets are it's a uh, ongoing gift which mm -hmm. i absolutely do not believe right because we have the canon of scripture 
And we see the fruits of the belief in that. Like, hey, you can hear from God. People don't understand when Todd Bentley says, God told me that, he's putting his words on the same level as scripture. Yes. His words should be inscripturated, right? We right. should be, they should be people, you know, if they really believed and understood what was going on, writing down every word right. and us cherishing every single word that Todd says, because mm -hmm. he's saying God is audibly telling him that mm -hmm. it's, he's it, adding to the Bible is yeah. what he's doing. Right he's now. saying it's people God breathed. Yeah, yeah. It's God breathed. So people don't get that. You, yeah. you know, they just say, Oh, he's a, and, and you'll challenge him on this. So this is a new Testament prophet, not an old Testament prophet. Things are different now, Yeah. but the biggest tell, and I like what Jesus says is wisdom, wisdom is vindicated in her fruits. The way it fleshes out mm -hmm. yep. in the life of the church is people close the Bible and they listen to Todd and they take notes. I've been in these churches. I've been in charismatic churches. Bible goes away. Now we're just listening to some crazy guy and his yes. revelations and his visits to heaven. The Bible goes shelved. And, you know, I think what was indicative with Lakeland, there was no preaching of gospel. Right. It was just him rambling on and on and shaking and moaning and people just rolling over each other on the ground, like, mm. <laughs> like right. big old floppy fish. <laughs> so the word of God goes, are people getting saved without the true proclamation of the, the gospel? No, yeah. Yeah. no, nothing's happening there. And that's the problem. So his teaching is, you know, he's been in the presence of the Lord. Also, he believes to be have been demon possessed as a Christian, which we know that that's heresy. Yeah. You yeah. cannot Can't be happen. possessed by uh, any type of demon when you have the abiding Holy Spirit, the strong man within the, your, your heart. And it just goes goes yeah. on and on and on. I think uh, he probably was <clears throat> demon possessed because he's not a Christian. Yeah. And I think, you know, I was talking to Jake about this. That's a tell. If you yeah. were demon possessed and it actually happened, it goes to right, show that's you're, a fruit not, that, yeah. You're, yeah. you're not a Christian. Also, the army boot to the lady, old lady's face while she's worshiping. Probably a good sign you're yeah, not a Christian. Yeah, that's a good sign that you, maybe you're not a man of God. You <laughs> kick somebody in the face. An old lady worshiping. Man, yeah. I think it's really God. It's just a display of the ignorance of God's people and the judgment of maybe God upon right. uh, his people in right. a sense, yeah. you know, of mm. like, look how deluded you are. Look yeah. how far away you are from me and from any understanding of what the scriptures say, any understanding of what a man of God should be, Yeah, that you will approve and laugh and totally accept and give money to a guy that kicks a guy in a, in a sternum who has stage four cancer. Yeah, I mean, that is- And not it, run him out of town like right. he should have done. Right? That, you know? that the is, men in that church should have got up and tied, hog tied him. Oh, 100%. But it's just like a perfect por portrait of that strong delusion that has been sent. You know, like what a, like, it's disgusting. Like people are so just deluded in that, that they could actually believe that that would be from God. Yeah, it's it's sick. Okay, so the most loving thing that has ever been done to Todd Bentley is by Justin Peters. Mm -hmm. And we're going to watch this. it real quick. And Jesus will look at them and he said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. This man is a worker of iniquity. Which man? You. He preaches a poem. God bless you. This is a true promise, though. This is a true... Don't take me with your crutch. I'm just trying to bless you. Well, thank you, sir. I'm not giving you my anointing because I have nothing to give. Thank you. Just bless him and just pray. And hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, what an awesome God. thing. What a, what a courageous, Peters. bold thing to do. Stand up in front of that kind of a hostile environment. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, they're his fans. And he says, I have, I'm not going to give you my anointing because I have nothing to give. You're exactly right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Those were probably some of the only true words that yes. flowed out of the guy's yes. mouth. Yeah. He doesn't have any anointing to give. This guy is as far away from the Lord as you can possibly imagine. Yeah. Yeah. But he stood up there courageously and he said, you, you are the man. Like Nathan, you know, yep. you are the man. Yep. Um, and that's what we got to do with the wolves. Like I had said before, if we don't point out the wolves, they're going to eat all the sheep yeah. and then people will continue to be horribly tortured. <laughs> I mean, we and... got tortured, just yeah. victimized and, yep. and, and hurt by these men. Sometimes yeah. tortured. I mean, that's torturous to like tell somebody if they don't have enough faith, then they're not going to be healed of their cancer or whatever. And that's probably very torturous. You yeah. Know? Stage four colon cancer. You get a kick to the gut. Mm. Think what that must've felt like. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Anyway, yeah, it's been a tough one, but we got to call these guys out. Yeah. And like we had said before in our previous episode, it's a loving thing to do. Todd Bentley hits you a little differently than Mike Todd. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, yeah. Michael Todd is not kicking people in the gut and yeah. in bouncing a woman's legs off the uh, 
off the uh, platform or kicking yeah. a woman in the face. Um, what man would do that? Just a non-man. So, yeah, it's our duty to call these guys out because we love the flock. And if you have anything to do with Todd Bentley, get away from this guy. You know, yeah. don't yeah. go to his stuff. Don't support him. Todd, if you want to talk about this, come on. We would love to talk to you about this on the show. So, love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, we got some great stuff uh, on the uh in the cooker there you go on the horizon <laughs> and so uh yeah we appreciate you and we'll talk to you soon yeah thank you we'll see you